Hey guys, my name is Hadi Aziz, a third year student at the Sophie Davis program, a seven year combined BSMB program at the City College of New York. Uh, I'm one of the student ambassadors from the City College Office of Admissions, and today we'll be giving you a virtual tour of our school. Um, so before we head off on our virtual tour, I'd like to give you a brief history of our school as well as when our school was founded. So founded in 1847 by Townsend Harris, City College was once called the Free Academy down on 23rd and Lexington Avenue and is now up on 137th Street and Common Avenue. Our campus is roughly 35 acres running from 130th Street to 141st Street and is divided into two parts of the campus. Uh, South Campus runs from 130th Street to 135th Street and is the more modern part of campus. Um, and 136th Street to 141st Street is what we call North Campus, which is the more classical and more traditional part of our school. Um, what you find on North Campus are relatively uh, Gothic style buildings. These are the traditional and original buildings of our school, uh, and they are actually national landmarks. So in other words, they can't be torn down. And to maintain these buildings, we do what's called terracotta restoration, where these buildings are regularly renovated uh, to make sure that we preserve uh, the sanctity as well as the tradition of our school. Also, these buildings were designed by George Post, who designed the New York Post building, the New York Times building, as well as the New York Stock Exchange. So that's a brief history of our school. And now we move over to Pranav, who will talk to you about the administration building, uh, as well as other buildings at our school. Hi, my name is Pranav Parsi and I'm a third year undergraduate student at the Sophie Davis School of Biomedical Education, which is a seven year BSMD program at the City College of New York. So I'll just be talking to you about some of the buildings that you can find on North Campus. First, I'll be talking about the Howard E. Wiley Administration Building. This building was named after Howard E. Wiley, who was a distinguished alumnus and a philanthropist who graduated from CCNY in 1955. Some of the things you can find in the Wiley Administration Building include the President and the Provost Office, the Offices for Admissions, Financial Aid, Barsar and Registrar, so any issues that students have, um, whether it be with admissions or with financial aid, can go to the um, various administration's offices in this building. Another main area on North Campus is the Quad, and uh, it's, the reason it's, call, it's called the Quad is because of the four main buildings in this area. So first I'll be talking about Wingate Hall, which was named after George Wingate, who was an attorney and also a distinguished alumnus who also graduated from CCNY. In Wingate Hall, you can find the Veterans Affairs Office. So this is for um, veterans who are looking to come back to CCNY, and this office will help them make the transition back into the college community. Also in Wingate Hall is the Wingate Fitness Center. So this is a 6,000 square foot indoor gym, and in this fitness center, there you can find an indoor track, you can find cardio machines and weightlifting machines. Also in the gym, students like to use personal trainers and also attend various classes such as yoga, Pilates, Zumba. So there are a lot of things that are happening in the fitness center. Lastly, Wingate Hall also has um, dance studios. CCNY offers various dance courses such as ballet, modern dance, and jazz. And students involved in dance organizations such as the Daisy Dance Organization and the Salsa Club, these dance organizations like to take advantage of the dance studios. One really cool thing is that the fitness center is free for all students, faculty, and staff. So it's a really good place to get a workout when you're on the college campus. Next to Wingate Hall is Harris Hall. And Harris Hall was named after Townsend Harris, who was the founder of the City College of New York. So Harris Hall houses the CUNY School of Medicine or the Sophie Davis School of Biomedical Education. And this is actually the program that I am attending. So the Sophie Davis School of Biomedical Education is basically a seven year program in which students obtain their Bachelor of Sciences degree in the first three years and then obtain their MD degree in the last four years. The Sophie Davis program has its clinical campus up in St. Barnabas Hospital in the Bronx, while the academic campus is at the CCNY um, campus. One really cool thing is that students who are part of this program are allowed to bypass the MCAT so they can matriculate directly into medical school, which is a really great thing for students who are definitely involved and in, interested in medicine. The CUNY School of Medicine also has the PA program or Physician Assistance Program and this is a master's program that students can apply to after obtaining their undergraduate degree. Next to Harris Hall you can find Compton Gothels Hall. 
So Compton Gothels Hall was named after Alfred Compton, who was a professor of mixed mathematics at CCMI for over 60 years, and also George Gothels, who was the chief engineer behind the Panmet Canal. And both of them also graduated from CCMI. So Compton Gothels Hall houses the art department and theater and speech department, and the Robertson Center for Graphic Arts and Communication Design. So there are a lot of cool things in Compton Gothels Hall, such as kilns, painting studios, a painting loft, Mac labs, 3D printing labs, so a lot of state-of-the-art resources for students in these majors. Compton Gothels Hall also has the art gallery, which showcases art from various undergraduate students, graduate students, and also professional artists. It's a really cool place to check out if you're on campus. And also it has the Charles Gatnig Memorial Theater Library. So this has over 5,000 volumes of plays, anthologies, biographies, and a lot of different creative works are also there. One fun fact about Compton Gothel Hall is that if you take a look at the building, you can see a tall chimney coming out from the roof. And the reason this is like the way it is, is because until 1953, Compton Gothel Hall has the power and heating center for the college. So oftentimes you could see smoke from the coal that was burning escaping through the chimney. And the last building that you can find on the quad is Baskerville Hall. And this used to be the former chemistry building on CCNY campus. And it was named after Charles Baskerville, who was a professor of chemistry at CCNY. However, now it houses the High School for Math, Science and Engineering, which is one of the nine specialized high schools in New York City. Directly opposite from the quad, you can find Shepherd Hall, which was named after Edward Shepherd, who helped to secure the land for the reallocation of CCNY to its uptown campus in 1907. Shepherd Hall is the centerpiece of the five neo-Gothic buildings on North Campus, and it's actually the only building on North Campus that's open 24-7. In Shepherd Hall, you can find the Music Department and the Department of Media and Communication Arts, which has various majors such as Advertising and Public Relations, Film, and Journalism. Shepherd Hall also has the state-of-the-art Sonic Arts program, which allows 24-7 student access, and also is the Music and Audio Technology program at CCNY. Music Library is one of the main places in Shepherd Hall, and this has various music scores and also re many recordings. The main floor of the library it has many practice rooms that students can use to practice their instruments, and the basement floor is used for independent study. Another place in the Great Hall is known as Lincoln's Corridor or the Hall of Presidents. This corridor has the various portraits of the presidents that have served CCNY throughout its history. You can also find something called Lincoln's Bust in Lincoln's Corridor, so this is one of five uh, busts in the United States of Lincoln, and the, with the other four being in, at the White House, at Lincoln's Grave, at the University of Berkeley, and the Chicago Historical Society. So one quirky thing about Lincoln's bust is that the nose is slightly discolored, and the reason it's like that is because of an age-old tradition at CCNY, which is students like to rub the nose for good luck, especially before exams. Lastly, the centerpiece of um, Shepherd's Hall is the Great Hall, which is a cathedral scaled space on the second and third floors of the building. So this is a place where a lot of historical events have happened and also many convocations, conferences, and many events like that. A few notable appearances include Presidents Woodrow Wilson, FDR, William Howard Taft, and also Albert Einstein. If you were to take a look at the Great Hall, you could see various stained glass windows on the sides showcasing the emblems of colleges throughout the United States. So these were basically welcoming gifts to City College when the college moved uptown in 1907. Also in the back of the Great Hall, you can find a mural called The Graduate, and this was painted by Edwin Blashfield. So in the mural, you can see a woman sitting at the back who is representing wisdom itself, and she's holding a globe representing the spread of knowledge around CCNY. In the center, you can find the graduate, and he is about to receive his diploma from Alma Mater, which is the Latin for nursing mother. Hi guys, um, my name is Shayna, and I'm currently a third year undergraduate student here at City College. My major is Biomedical Sciences at the Sophie Davis School of Medicine. Today I will be talking to you a little about Steinman Hall and the North Academic Center. So Steinman Hall was named after David Steinman who graduated from City College in 1906. He was actually a well-known civil designer and bridge engineer, and one of his most famous projects actually includes the Henry Hudson Bridge. Steinman Hall also houses the Grove School of Engineering, which was named after Andrew Grove. He was one of the former CEOs and chairmen of the Intel Corporation. Andrew Grove actually donated $26 million to the school and called City College the dream machine of New York. 
Being the only school of engineering here in New York, Grove houses many different majors and minors, including chemical, electrical, mechanical, and different computer sciences and programs as well. The Zahn Innovation Center, which is also a part of the Grove School, is basically an incubator for students to be introduced to social enterprise and technological entrepreneurships. It actually funds $100,000 to students every year who have different technological innovations and just in general ideas. It's a great way to get involved. So next up, we will be talking about the North Academic Center or the NAC building. The NAC building was designed by the architect John Carl Wernicke and it was completed in 1984. It takes up almost three whole city blocks and it houses over 2,000 classrooms, labs, meeting rooms, and lecture halls. The NAC building also has a CCNY insignia on the outside, which is three female heads and the motto for Spike, Respike, and Espike, which means past, present, and future. The NAC building is one of the largest buildings on the North Campus and it houses the School of Education, the Division of Arts and Humanities, as well as the Colin Powell School for Civil and Global Leadership. The NAC building also houses the undergraduate and graduate student government offices and the Department of Public Safety. My favorite part of the NAC building are the cafes and the cafeterias. On the first and second floor, we have two cafes and a cafeteria, and then on the third floor, we have the faculty dining room. So students can use their City One card, and they can deposit money on it, and then just swipe and pay for their meals. Although we don't have a meal plan, we do have these restaurants and just basically delis and restaurants all around the campus, um, which is a great way to get introduced to different types of foods that are offered here in New York City. We also have the Career Professional Development Institute at the NAC building, which is a way for students to get involved into different companies and businesses. They can be taken to career fairs here on campus and get job internships, usually within the first year. We constantly get emails about so many different career fairs and opportunities here at school. Kids can also develop their resume and just learn how to interview, practice that with different teachers there and professors. The NAC building also has a City Technological Center, which is where students can borrow a laptop for the day if they forgot their own. There is also the Writing Center and the Tutoring Learning Resource Center. There are just a bunch of different opportunities for students to get help with their classes or if they need help on their essays. There's so many different clubs and organizations, over 200 I believe, and if you can't find the club that you want, you can always start your own. There are also two libraries at the NAC building, the Dominican Studies Library, which is a library that preserves the history of Dominican people here represented at City College. There's also the Morris Raphael Cohen Library, which has five floors. Each floor is associated with different studiers. So on the first floor, there is the group learning study rooms, and then on the fifth floor, it's completely silent. If you need to get some hardcore studying done, you can always go there. There is also printing centers there. Students are given a thousand uh, pages per semester to print anything. Um, color pages, though, do take up three three out of the thousand pages that you get. And there are just computers and different studying rooms all throughout the NAC building. Right outside the NAC building is the Alumni Wall of Fame where we have pictures of 10 City College graduates who have actually received the Nobel Prize. The Accessibility Center Student Disability Services is located in the NAC building and is housed within the Division of Student Affairs. It is part of health and wellness for all students. It ensures full participation and meaningful access to all the students of the City College of New York School services, programs, and activities. The Accessibility Center engages in increasing disability awareness among members of CCNY community through workshops, trainings, and the dissemination of literature. It is committed to ensuring the protection and maintenance of all students and their information and records. This center is also trained to accommodate students according to different needs and abilities. Students are strongly encouraged to speak to their professors about any upcoming exams and accommodations that are needed, and this center will fulfill those accommodations. So yeah, that's the NAC building and the Steinman building. I hope you enjoyed this tour and uh, we welcome you at City College. I'm Matthew Romano. I'm a senior here at City College and I'm studying English and secondary education and I've been a tour guide for three years. So the first stop that we'll take you to today is the City College bus stop. This bus stop shows the shuttle buses that are running from campus 
to the A, B, C, and D lines on 125th Street and 145th Street. These shuttle buses run 24 seven and they're displayed on the next bus to show you when the next shuttle bus is coming. So at eight o'clock, if you wanna to get to and from the train station quickly and you don't want to walk across the streets at night, you can feel free to take the shuttle Alternatively, if the shuttle bus happens to not be running or it's late on campus and the shuttle isn't running as often, you can also call the number to public safety, which can be found at the back of your CCNY ID. Public safety will actually pick you up from your location and take you to or from the campus's closest subway stations so that you don't have to worry about your safety when leaving to or arriving to school. Here we have the Robert E. Marshak Science Building. This is named after the eighth president of our college, Robert E. Marshak, and it's a 13 story building, even though it does not look it from the outside. Inside we have a library, a planetarium, a weather station, medical laboratories, and numerous classrooms and other research labs. It is the home of the division of science, including biology, biochemistry, chemistry, and other arising areas. And in the first main hallway, we have research posted up on the walls. And this research is done by our students who have gone on in the last eight years to produce two Rhodes Scholars and several Goldwater and Truman Scholars. And they've gone on to the most prestigious graduate schools with grants from the National Science Foundation. This class of students all makes up CCNY's largest undergraduate research program in the metropolitan area. That's because we have faculty and staff that work with our students on research from as early as freshman year to up to senior year and beyond. Whereas in some private schools, you may start research in junior or senior year. And just because this is the science library doesn't mean that research is limited to science. We have research in all fields. So if you're an English major, a physics major, or a architecture major, you can do research in any field that you'd like. Main hallway, we'll see the Marshak Library. This library is one of the smaller libraries on campus and thus it's one of the quieter ones, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have a ton to offer. Since it is one of the quieter libraries, a lot of students will come here to do their work in a quieter space than a main library on campus. And they'll also come here to rent TI-84 calculators for their math classes that can end up costing a ton of money if you pay out of pocket. So don't pay out of pocket, just come to the Marshak Library and we'll have one stocked for you. In addition, in this library, there's the Reserve Officer Training Corps. That's a program that provides college students the skills and leadership training necessary to become officers in the United States Army, the Army Reserve, or the Army National Guard. One of the cadets of ROTC is actually Colin Powell. He's the most famous ROTC cadet, and he was, of course, the former Secretary of State and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Elsewhere in this building, we'll have the athletics department. This athletics department features the Mahoney swimming pool, which is currently closed for renovations, but they're starting to do those renovations so that we can have it up and running hopefully in the future. And we also have a large gymnasium of seating approximately 2,000 spectators and it's 30,000 square feet. We have 17 varsity sports on campus. So there's eight for women, there's nine for men, and recently lacrosse was added. In 1950, we are known for being the first and the only team to win both the NCAA Men's Championship and the NIT Men's Championship. The Marshak Science Building is also the home to the recently remodeled Student Health Services Center, which offers free and confidential clinical services, including physical examinations, immunizations, including the ones required by the college for admission, and over-the-counter medications. These services are provided by a full-time RN and a part-time medical provider. Obviously, important to wellness is also our mental health, especially on college campuses where students are faced with rigorous yet enriching coursework. Committed to our founding vision of access to excellence, Marshak is the location of our counseling center, which provides short-term, high-quality, student-centered, and culturally informed counseling services to all students. Our staff at the counseling center take pride in their modern and integrative approach and their dedication to treating all students with respect and in recognition of their unique strengths as well as stressors. heading towards South Campus, specifically the gates at South Campus at 135th Street. The first building we'll see is the Bernard and Ann Spitzer School of Architecture. 
This is obviously named after the parents of Elliot Spitzer, former governor of New York. His parents actually donated $25 million to the school. So we turned the school into an architecture school restructured in 2009. Since then, it served as one of the only two public architecture schools in New York, the other one being in SUNY Buffalo. In such a competitive major and a rigorous workload, our architecture students will often stay up all night at the library. And so the library fittingly looks a little bit different than most libraries. In addition, the hallmark of this building and the hallmark of the campus at large is the solar roof pod. This roller roof pod is located at the top of the Bernard and Ann Spitzer School of Architecture, and it was actually created under the direction of Professor Christian Volkman. It received the People's Choice Runner-Up Award in the 2011 U.S. Department of Energy Solar Decathlon in Washington, D.C. Simply, that's a collegiate competition to design, build, and operate a solar home. My name is Perla and I am a third year double major in International Studies and English here at the City College of New York and I'll be talking about four important buildings on the south side of campus. One is the CCNY Center for the Arts. This is one of the largest performing arts centers in Manhattan north of Lincoln Center. It features two theaters that seats about 630 people and 267. There's a range of showcase performances that happen here from classical, jazz, and Latin music, to films and student-run productions. Organizations that also use up this space is Carnegie Hall and Ballet Hispaniola and more. All performances students are allowed to participate and they get a discounted ticket price. The next two buildings I'll be talking about is the CUNY Advanced Science Research Building and the City College Center for Discovery and Innovation. Both these buildings were open in the spring of 2015 and support high-end research. Like it says in the name, one is controlled by the City College of New York and the other is controlled by CUNY. Both of these buildings look into the research of neuroscience, environmental science, structural biology, and more. You will need special passes to get into these buildings, meaning students do not have classes in these buildings. The last building I'll be talking about is the Towers. The Towers is our residence hall, opened in 2006 and is the first residence hall built on a CUNY campus. It houses 600 students in fully furnished air conditioning units complete with Wi-Fi, card access, and free cable TV. There is about 164 rooms with four different styles, and there are two contracts for students one to stay in the towers for 10 months and the other for 12 months. The tower is fully equipped with free laundry room and an indoor gym, which is open 24 seven. Hi, my name is Jasmine Martin. I'm a senior here at the City College of New York studying public relations and advertising with a minor in journalism. And I'm gonna tell you guys about some of our most famous alumni, along with some interesting facts about CCNY. So for starters, the school is about 16,000 students, about 13,000 of those students are undergrads and about 3,000 of them are graduate students. We're also 53% female and 47% male with classes ranging from about 20 to 29 students and lectures range from about 75 to 200 students, depending on the class. Um, it's also really great to note that there are over 150 countries represented on our campus with over 100 different languages spoken, which is the reason we're one of the most diverse colleges in the nation. And I also wanted to tell you guys about some of our most famous alumni. Some of them include General Colin Powell, who was the first African-American Secretary of State in the United States. We're also really proud of Upton Sinclair, who was a journalist and an author who wrote The Jungle. And we also have Andrew Grove, who was the former CEO and chairperson of Intel. That is most of what there is to know about City College. And if you have any other questions, you can always feel free to visit our website or reach out to a particular department that you want.